By now, you've probably already heard that both Photoshop and Lightroom have a new lens blur feature built in that helps you emulate having a very shallow depth of field just by chance that you didn't have it on a particular image that you shot or a lens that can do that. So here's how you access it in Adobe Photoshop. First of all, you want to go ahead and open up your image and then you want to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Now currently recording this video, this is still in early access, but if you go over to your settings and scroll down, you're going to see Lens Blur and all you have to do is hit apply. Now it does come with a variety of options so you can really dial in these settings and make them look even better. I personally think in this image it did a little bit too much so we're actually going to dial back on the blur amount and I'm going to set that to about 25% or so. I think this looks a lot more believable than it did before and I'm pretty happy with it. Now you can change a few different settings here such as a boost, you can do the bokeh, and you can also change the focal range. So if you just grab this tool here, you can actually move around where the focal range is actually going to be. So in this particular moment here, we want this to be in front, and we can actually make this a little bit more narrow so that we are controlling more so of our subject. Now there are instances where it's going to miss certain things or take out areas you don't want, such as hairlines, and it may not always get into these little nooks and crannies around your particular subject. Now if we jump into Adobe Lightroom Classic, we go to the Develop module and you scroll down to find Lens Blur here as well, it works exactly the same way that it does in Photoshop. You simply just apply it to the image and it's going to give you very similar results. So again, I feel like it's a little bit too strong on this image, so I'm actually going to dial it back to about 25 or even 30% here, but I think it gives an overall nice look. You can see around the hairline, it does kind of cut off a little bit of hairs and things here. Not super noticeable, but you do have refine options where you can vis visualize the depth and you can actually control both focus or blur. When you click on one of these, it's going to give you a brush where you can dial in settings such as amount, the size of the brush, the feather, and the flow. So you could dial these settings down a little bit and then kind of map out around those particular edges if it is a little bit too overpowering. Now this doesn't just have to be used for subjects in front of the camera, at least not in the close foreground. You can actually use this for other effects such as using it as a tilt shift lens. So if we hit apply on this image of this landscape, you can see that everything already looks a little bit on the tiny side. But if we do this, it kind of gives us that depth of field that you would expect to have from a tilt shift lens. Same rules apply. You can move this around to different areas and choose where you want the blur to be versus where you want the focus to be handled. I think this is a really cool effect that works well on certain images to kind of give you that look of little models that you've built in your home or something. So there's a lot of different variety that you can use this for if you just think outside of the box. I personally have had a lot of fun with this and I think it's going to be very helpful and beneficial in a lot of different situations when I'm doing portrait photography and varieties of things like that. I only have two lenses that I work with, one that gets an f2.8 and then I also have a telephoto lens that can't quite get the best depth of field all the time unless I'm zoomed all the way in. So for example, with this particular photo, I shot that at uh, 230 millimeters, which is the longest I can actually zoom in with this lens. And it does create a nice little blurred out background, but on other images, I'm not actually getting that. So in different settings, like say this one, the background is a little bit blurry. I could add some more to that. Or maybe in this image here, you can just add a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works when you already have a blurred background, but maybe you just need to add a little bit more. Maybe there was a person back here or something that was a tad bit distracting. So you can see it just adds a little extra layer of blur on top. But let me know in the comments section below if you've already been playing around with this and what you think about it. If you haven't, what are some things that you plan on doing? But hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, be sure to create something new today.